G'day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. This is the sixth and final part of a multi-part series covering texturing stylized characters. This one's going to be short and sweet though because the methods I'm going to show you in this time lapse are largely the same as those I've covered in the previous versions. So all I'm doing is applying the same methodology to the clothing. The only exception to this is that I'm not doing a sort of pre-bake as I did with the previous uh, mesh. And that's because I haven't done any additional multi-res sculpting on top of the clothing to get more detail. So in this case, I just have to do an unwrap as you can see here. And then after I've done that is go straight into the procedural texturing methods that we covered with the body. And the methods for unwrapping clothing are almost exactly the same as unwrapping a body. But in this case, it's actually more amplified because you are actually unwrapping clothing. So using real world seams as your guide is pretty much the golden rule when it comes to unwrapping clothing, such as suits, t-shirts, pants, and other, you know, sort of everyday kind of clothing. Obviously, if you had something a bit more involved like armor or anything like that, you'd want to try and do something a little bit different. But even then, armor, you know, more you know stylized style of clothing they are going to have seams they are going to have those sort of things to think about so following that sort of you know general guide is still going to help you unwrap a very clean um, uv unwrap or uv map for your clothing and as you get more comfortable with the texturing and material process of building up your uh, textures and materials for a character you can start to be a bit more experimental with your approach do you have to actually UV unwrap, you know, certain things like the buttons as you just saw? Or do you, or can you get away with using more procedural methods for creating materials that will sort of get you 90% of the way there or even 100% of the way there in some circumstances? So really understanding how the node editor works in a uh, rendering point of view um, will really help you to save time and create even better materials out of the gate with less reliance on texturing itself. And that's kind of what this video is all about today. It's really about um, getting across the idea that, you know, there's no one-stop shop, no silver bullet when it comes to texturing or making character designs such as this. It's really down to uh, your circumstances. Is it, you know, for example, if you're working in Blender completely, you know, within Blender without any need for exporting textures out to a game engine, for instance, you have to ask yourself, do I really need to bake out the materials? Do I need to actually bake in texture sets to, you know, reproject onto my character? In some cases that might actually be no, I can just get away with the procedural material setup. In other cases, you can say, yeah, I do need to, you know, bake in those details. I need to bring down the, you know, the overheads on the processing. I need to simplify my node setup to make the rendering process easier for me. Um, but, you know, it's completely up to you and it depends on, you know, what you need. And in this case, you can see that my need for this character in this particular circumstance is that I wanted to texture onto the mesh using repeating patterns, for instance some you know materials to use as you know a pattern i can use those you know as a repeating pattern inside of my node editor and eventually i'm going to bake that stuff in so um what you just saw in the last three minutes of this video was that i just did an unwrap i've uh, assigned a material to all of those uh objects as the same material and i quickly blocked out the colors of you know the suit the pants the shirt and all that sort of stuff and now i'm starting to play with you know the mask setup just like we did in the last videos so you know i'm using a mask to bring in the pattern for that leopard skin um you know i'm going to use the same mask to choose whether or not i want that singlet to be metallic in nature or not um so yeah it just takes a bit of planning you can see i'm actually recreating the pattern there in illustrator um i'm not using any procedural methods for that um but you could if you wanted to, it just depends on what kind of patterns you want. Um, but those are the sort of things you can think about, you know, it's it's more of a problem solving, it's more puzzle oriented, it's, you know, it's not a straightforward process when it comes to texturing. Um, it's not just painting, you know, uh, at least in a modern sense, you know, it, it, you can get away with so much 
with with procedural uh, material workflows now that sometimes texturing completely becomes redundant. Um, so, you know, understanding how materials work and how they function and what you can do, you know, can save you a lot of time in the future. And there's tons of channels out there, tons of YouTube tutorials just about playing with procedural material workflows. So it could be something as simple as, you know, a pattern such as this with a couple of nodes, or it could be something crazy that has, you know, ridiculous amounts of depth inside the material, even though it's a single planar object or like, you know, having a specific kind of reflectivity about it and um, subsurface scattering and having all that material work together to make something that's really, really unique and crazy. Understanding the material node editor in some ways is actually more important than the texturing method itself. Texturing itself is quite simple. It's just using brushes and understanding color values and all sorts of shit to, you know, get what you want. Whereas, you know, I can see here, I'm trying to get the pattern of the clothing into the material itself by using repeating patterns. You know, you know, I'm not painting in every single strand of cloth. I'm using a texture to do that, you know, and then I'm just repeating that texture within the mask of, you know, my blazer, you know, stuff like that. You know, you don't have to paint in every detail. You, you need to find ways to make life easier. So, you know, again, finding libraries such as this one here, um, you know, CC zero textures, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, finding, you know, libraries that let you get the resources you need quickly. They're also really useful. Um, sharing materials with your friends, um, building a material library, that sort of stuff is really important and could be very beneficial in the future when you start using the same material over and over and over again. And here's another drop of wisdom. Um, finding resources, uh, using other people's materials is not a cheat. Um, again, a lot of artists have this weird mentality that everything has to be made by themselves and constructed, you know, with every inch of their, you know, their being has to be in this piece of art. When the actual uh, reality is, you know, just save yourself some fucking time, pay 20 bucks and get a material library from Blender Market or, you know, find one on BlendSwap or something that will make your life way, way easier. The materials have already been made. In most cases, the materials you need are so common that you shouldn't even be fucking bothering about, you know, recreating them from scratch. Unless you're going for something that's really, really specific. So, you know, finding those resources and utilizing them in a way that, you know, will save you time is super important. The other thing about texturing and materials um, and, you know, finding resources is that you don't have to just use the resources as they are presented to you. You can always chop and change them. They're always editable. Um, understanding how materials work and how you want to achieve a certain look, you can always mix and match this stuff using the same mask methodology that we're working with. You know, you can get those procedural materials in, create a mask, mix it with another material, and then get some really cool, funky stuff going on. And, you know, I'm basically doing that with this, this setup here with the clothing. I've got this metallic singlet with this uh, purple blazer and cream pants. Um, <laughs> You don't have to overthink things. So when you are working on something like clothing, a character, or even um, vehicles and buildings and stuff like that, just think about the setting that they're meant to be in. Think about the character that they have. Think about the context in which they are meant to be situated in, and then build out your materials with that in mind. I mean, obviously it works better when you have a piece of concept art or a, you know, a, a general idea in your head of what you want, but understanding those sort of things will make the process a lot, lot, lot easier. Another thing to be aware of is just really understanding how materials work. Understand what each function has, what they do. Um, understand how it reacts with light, how it reacts with, you know, its surroundings, reflectivity, um, the roughness of things. Um, and just really understanding how to construct things with those parameters. Go and look at actual explanations about how things work, how things like Fresnel work, how what they are meant to do, what anisotropy is, for instance, you know, how that works with metals. That's really important. And understanding 
how and why the light reacts to certain materials in a certain way it will really help you build out an understanding of how to texture things. Because without that knowledge, you don't really know how to do that effectively, especially when it comes to rendering and understanding the way that the light works with these materials. So understanding how that works in relation to light is really important, how that works in relation with the textures and the lighting and the material all come together to create something really, really cool. So yeah, if you really want to get into the texturing game, put in or do fucking diligence and do the research. Understand how things work, understand how materials work, understand how lighting works because that is really the most important thing about the texturing process is how it looks in the end not just how it looks in a in a single render you have to think about how it looks like in movement you have to understand how it looks like you know once it's gone through post-production all that kind of shit so do diligence do your research understand how things work and that goes with anything by the way you know modeling rigging animation understand how it fucking works understand the underpinnings learn about the underpinnings of how things work and things will be a lot easier going forward because then you can jump into any other fucking software you can jump into maya you can jump into blender you can jump into 3ds max you can go into their texturing software check it out do the same shit and just run with it the learning process becomes much easier when you understand those fundamentals and i'm telling you right now Going from, say, Cycles to, you know, Redshift or V-Ray or Arnold, as long as you understand how the materials work and how you can mix them together, you can do the same thing. You can use a mask texture to mask out different materials. You can do color grading within the material node setup, all that sort of stuff. The same thing can be applied. So this is not just a Blender-centric method. This can work across any rendering engine that supports a node-based setup. So some of you watchers out there might be saying, oh, fucking hell, dicko. I want to learn about specifically understanding how to do texturing for clothing. And the thing is, we already have done that. We've already done that with the body of this character. The only difference is the context in which we are texturing. So really, that's why I wanted to talk about it in a more broad sense here is that, you know, there is no one way to do things. There are so many different ways to do texturing, in particular with stylized characters or even in, you know, realistic characters. It's always about adapting those very basic ideas of mixing materials using masks you know, playing with, you know, source images, all that sort of stuff to get the results you want. And if you're expecting a sort of paint by numbers method for anything to do with art or 3D or animation or anything like that, then you're going to be sorely disappointed in the future with everything to do with that sort of medium. Because it's adapting so quickly, things change very quickly. I mean, fuck, I just saw a goddamn video on Twitter about a dude who just rigged a fucking character without any goddamn joints. I mean, how the fuck does that work? I don't know. But the thing is, it happens. People adapt, they try different things, they're experimental and they they make things work. And that's kind of the mindset you gotta be in in everything that you do with, you know, 3D stuff. 3D characters, 3D texturing, um, animation, post-production, all that sort of stuff. Enjoy the puzzle solving process, enjoy the challenge of things and don't be afraid to take the time to experiment. I mean, if you're not working toward a deadline, it doesn't really matter. And if you are working to a deadline, there are plenty of ways to cheat. Plenty of ways. There's Mixamo, there's, you know, obviously, technically, Substance Painter is kind of a cheat. There's all this dynamic texture painting stuff. It's all good. But, you know, there's ways to make your life easier in that regard. But if you have the time to experiment, play with materials, play with, you know, new approaches, then embrace it. So I hope you've enjoyed this series. And I wanted to end this video on a more philosophical slash generalized note, because um, in some ways that is the more important lesson to be had out of this entire process, because you know, I've been getting requests for, you know, oh, can we do it in Substance? Can we do it in Nixer? Can we do it with Armor Paint? All that sort of stuff. 
And the answer is yes, we could probably go into those processes, but um, in some ways the, the method is exactly the same, it's just with different tool sets. So, you know, understanding those basic principles, how to mix uh, materials with masks, understanding how they work, understanding the principal uh, functions of different things like roughness, metallic, all that sort of stuff. Um, those are the things that are more important than the actual tool set itself. I guarantee it, if you were to jump into Substance Painter right now after following this series, you could probably find your way through the most basic feature set of Substance. Obviously, there's more advanced features you can do, but in the end, um, you know, those things are minor issues to overcome versus the underlying fundamentals. So with those wisdom bombs out of the way, we are going to move on to the arduous process that is rigging. I actually love rigging. I think it's really, really fun. So it's going to be a super kick ass series. It's going to be ongoing. I think it's going to take several videos to get through this stuff. So I can't wait to share you that. Um, that will be dropping sometime in the next week or so. So catches, be well and cock those an asshole.